For months, Nigeria has been unable to meet its required share of OPEC's quota being 1.683 million barrels per day in December. Uh, from 1.701 million barrels per day in February, now 1.718 million barrels per day in March. According to the OPEC as a monthly all market report for the month of January, the country managed to pump 1.399 million barrels per day out of the total allocation uh, for which is uh, in contrast to the 1.197 million barrels per day pumped in December 2021 and produced the uh, 1.275 million barrels per day produced in November. However, poor upstream infrastructure, sabotage, or theft, as well as lack of investment, have been blamed for the ongoing default, as the country's oil sector is facing an unprecedented level of underinvestment, which declines reflecting uh, a near halt of upstream investments across all terrains since the COVID-19 pandemic outbreak. Normally, rising oil prices and higher volumes should boost the economy and strengthen the local currency. But Nigeria's reality is shaded as production has fallen by over 700,000 barrels per day in 2021. International oil companies are also prioritizing investment in other climbs. Well, joining me live to look at this in the studio to make sense of this is a public policy analyst and a forensic accountant uh, is Mr. Femi Ogumbi. Good afternoon, Mr. Ogumbi. It's good to have you on the show. Good afternoon, Mr. Olu. Yes. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, all right there. Yes, I'm seeing another perspective to issues around crude oil production today. But let's start first with how well are we doing, even with our production, before we now go to even meeting quotas and OPEX quotas. How well are we doing taking advantage of this God-given resource that we've been living on for years? How well are we doing with it? We are not doing good at all. Uh, you mentioned in the, in the, in the script that uh, Nigeria could not meet its quota. That is, uh, that's very painful uh, because we need the resources. Uh, look at the, the, the price of, uh, of crude oil today. Yes. It's, uh, probably it's over $100 we are talking. You know. And if we can't, if we are short by about 700,000 bar uh, barrels, that's, that's, that's unacceptable. Mm. That's, that's, that's really sad. So what do you think is our crude oil production capacity in terms of expertise and equ equipment? Um, it's, uh, what, what I would say is that, you know, how much are we putting it into our production? Mm. For instance, now, a lot of uh, oil refineries around the world, they work 24 hours. So it's, do we have the personnel do we have the equipment that is running 24 hours? If we don't have that, we have to step up. Mm. We cannot depend on 12 hours shift or eight hours shift. That is, that we, that is uh, unbelievable that we are not meeting our quota. Mm. Because what I'm here to talk about today is that Nigeria has to get out of OPEC so that we can increase our quota. We need to triple that quota. Can we really truly meet up, even if this quota is graciously increased? Can we meet up? Well, we have to look at what is it going to cost us? What kind of equipment do we have to run? What do we have to install? What kind of training do we need to give, uh, to give our personnel? So if, if, if we don't have the equipment right away, they should make the determination that within the next nine months to 12 months they better get the equipment here they better get the people trained we need to produce more than 1.8 million barrels that's 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 not acceptable hmm. And you think we can meet up with it if we, if we do all of this? Uh, because now you, you talked about that in your first submission that you are looking at Nigeria opting out of OPEC. Do you think we can just ignore OPEC just like that? There might be challenges, consequences for this if we decide to do that. We will not be the first country that will be opting out of OPEC. Uh, the, the, the only challenge that it will give us is some people might be advising us against it that uh, we're going to tap seriously into our reserve. But the situation in Nigeria now needs drastic, uh, drastic steps. 
the government, whatever uh, stakeholders that are involved, they need to, uh, to, to come to the agreement that we have been in OPEC for, for more than 40 years. We need to get out now immediately. We need to, to, to explore the opportunity of, uh, of lifting 4 million to 5 million barrels per day. Hmm. They, we have to do that. We, we have too many problems to take care that, uh, you know, today the country has an insecurity problem. A lot of infra infrastructures are, are, are left uncompleted. Uh, some time ago, I was listen, listening to a government official, Lagos State government official, in fact. Uh, the person was talking that, you know, they have over 1,000 roads to fix in Lagos State. And it is during the rainy season that, you know, all these roads, a lot of people, you know, they all come out. Now, when you have 1,000 roads and you, they only have resources to fix 43 out of over 1,000, it's, uh, that's why the, we have our people crying, our people dying, and, uh, and the country is bleeding everywhere, from every part of Nigeria. Uh, this, the leaders have to come together and uh, be bold enough and look at OPEC in the face and tell them that we're done. Hmm. A very big one there. Let, let's look at this, this graphics I have here, comparison of other OPEC members' quota and population with Nigeria's quota. We see Nigeria population of uh, above 200 million, like we'd always say, and we're doing 1.8 million barrels per day. That's not even, that's, that's uh, looking at Iraq's population, about 39 million, and uh, we have 4.2 million barrels per day. We have uh, Kuwait here, 3 million. What, what's your reaction to this? this uh, kind of graphic representation. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, if you look at that, that is very unfair. And uh, um, a lot of time, our, our leaders, you know, I'm sorry to say, they take nonsense, uh, what I would call nonsense, from uh, the, a lot of uh, organization or, or, from, or from other countries. You know, I mean, the, the statistics here, Nigeria with 220 million people, and the production less than two million barrels per day, that is unfair. They ca we cannot accept that kind of quota from them. That is why uh, the leaders have to step up. They, they, have to, they have to rise up to the occasion and get Nigeria out of OPEC and let us, pro let us get the, the equipment, the, train the people, and produce four, four million to five million barrels per day so that we can solve all these uh, uh, problems that we are facing. Well, I want to ask you, like, like a layman would ask, if we are doing 4 million, 5 million barriers per day, what about the, the channel to get to the market if we are outside OPEC? Will it be that easy? Uh, looking at our production lately, I even saw India also looking out already for other buyers already because we are not meeting up with what they expected from us. What about access to market if we decide to go independent? Well, it's, uh, there's a lot of uh, issues attached to that. You know, when you have a uh, Nigeria as the supplier, and let's look at the United States as the buyer. Um, the distance from any part of the Middle East, from Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, to United States, is longer than the distance from uh, Nigeria to, 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 to United States. I'm talking about the East, East Coast part of the United States, like, like New York, Washington, Boston area. So. The buyers, they look at, you know, what is it going to cost them? What, you know, they, 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 look, they, they look at that, they put that into consideration. So we have an edge regarding that aspect. The second edge we have is that the, the brand of Nigeria crude oil, the Bonny Light, is, 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 it has less sulfur. And uh, the United States uh, refineries, they are... Most, mo most of the refiners along the East Coast, that's they, 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 they are more comfortable Without you know, refining the, the crude that is coming from, from Nigeria. Nigeria. So we have that edge. Uh, if we produce 4 million to 5 million barrels, uh, immediately the United States knows that Nigeria is out of uh, uh, OPEC. Yeah. If we lift 5 million barrels, the United States will buy all of it. Hmm. And it will pay them you know, when the price is going too high, 
they will call Nigeria instead of if instead of calling Saudi Arabia, they will call Nigeria. Nigeria, can you pump more? So we have to position ourselves to benefit from global oil production. That is what we have not been doing. You don't think this would, if the price of crude remains very attractive, you don't think it would also make the Americans think back to start looking at uh, shale oil and maybe production of shale oil could be, you know, encouraged at that time? Oh, I mean, the, you're talking about fracking now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> fracking has never stopped. Uh, it will only slow down. And, you know, when they see that, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of money coming out of petroleum. Then they 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 they, they 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 try to bring more rigs. So what what happens is that you, although United States they consume a lot of oil, then they put a lot in reserve. But our situation is what concerns me: hmm. the state of Nigeria. The state of Nigeria right now is terrible. Our schools are in deplorable condition. Our roads are not good. Our, we, then we have this big insecurity attached That's to a it. a big elephant in the cupboard. Yeah. So um, we cannot all you know, sit down and let Nigeria go down the drain. Nigeria should not go down the drain. Hmm. So that's uh that's my now, stand. at the proposed production level how long do you think our crude will last uh, compared with the current production rate um if we are going at uh w with uh, with the five million yes, five million, four, barrels five million day, barrels yeah if we go at four five million barrels per day uh we can you know let's call that a a, a strategic move so because we have things to take care of so if we make that strategic move, what will happen if we produce at that level and we can sell at that level? Um, probably we, if for the next five years, we will, we will use up uh, about 7 million barrels. Our reserve is 37 million. Yes. So we will use up about 7 million barrels. And, uh, and we can all have our hands on the table that we want to fix Nigeria up between this... Uh, Five years, and we uh, we have we have to spend uh, some of our oil. We have to we have to spend you know sell some of them, and uh, b because how can we be existing going all over the place? Last year, we borrowed almost three billion dollar from World Bank and uh, AFDB. Uh, recently, Doctor Additional mentioned that. Uh, the problems, you know, he put it together. The problems confronting Africa right now, for us to solve those problems within the next few years, is, I think he mentioned about three years, Africa needs about $485 billion. Hmm. So, um, you know, Nigeria is part of that. Nigeria wants to lead Africa. I don't think we are leading Africa right now. We are in the back. So, um, the biggest uh, resource we have is this oil. If we can, you know, lift four billion, five million barrels per day, and uh, sell that, and make all that money, which will come to about hundred billion dollars a year, we can fix our problems. Let's wrap up now. Do you have an idea? You've already talked about projects, but specific projects that this proceeds, because of course this is more money, uh, like you said, even as we still pay more because we don't refine. That is one fact we should always admit. We don't refine. So high cost of crude, positive and negative news for us in Nigeria. But what do you what kind of projects do you think this should be targeted at and monitoring and valuation is also important? Uh, 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 you're talking about the yes whatever, proceeds whatever from yes yeah. um, well the the main thing we can target is uh, we need to fix our health, health, health sector mm -hmm. and uh, we need to uh, whatever money windfall we get from that we need to spend a lot of money on agriculture you know if we can feed us a nation that can feed ourselves you know they have solved about 60% uh, of their problem. So if we can get all this money through, you know, pumping more oil and uh, spend money 
on uh, earth sector and agriculture, uh, Nigeria will, uh, will, will be able to move forward. Hmm. Are you sure that those in the Hermos of Affairs, those that are actually regulators of this oil and gas industry, understand this conversation the way you've explained it? Are they looking, uh, taking advantage of it? Are you sending a message to them? Are you letting them also under hear from you? Then the second thing is, cost of production is also something that is very important. And NPC has been trying to reduce that cost of production. How do you react to these issues? Well, talking about cost of production, uh, my calculation always, you know, my calculation that we can make 100 billion a year, it has taken into cost of, uh, taking the cost of production into, into consideration. consideration. Uh, when, if, if, if the price of oil is at 95, dollars per barrel wow. you know you have to take out about uh, 30 of that you know as cost of production so what you can get will be the, the 65 you know so if you if 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 we can you know what i can say to the to the leaders you know or decision makers is that uh if if we can get out of opec and get all those uh money that can come in and fix it like the et, 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 uh, et care sector. Uh, look at, you know, people going into hospital. Uh, they tell them, uh, I'm talking about uh, the government hospitals now. Yes. They probably in the private sector, I don't know. Uh, they tell them, okay, you have to buy the drip we have to give you. You have to buy the cutting. You have to buy the, the plaster and so on. All those are stuff that the health care sectors can make. Manage. You know, put money into into the private sector that can, you know, invest in that, they have those industry. Let them supply all these hospitals with whatever they need. And when they supply them, the government pays them. The government will have to see, you know, uh, come up with an accounting uh, a procedure where you know that the hospital received whatever the, the equipment or materials Good. that they, Good. they supply them Good. and pay them and make sure that, you know, uh, these materials are not being, you know, resold somewhere else, and they make sure that they are not asking anybody, you know, to, to, to come and pay for cutting. Hmm. So not everybody can, uh, can afford, you know, going overseas, you know, for health care. Hmm. No, not everybody. Hmm. Nigerians are suffering, and uh, it's very painful, you know, if we, if, 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 if we look at this country and things are going down the drain, uh, it's, uh, it's pathetic. Oh, all right. So we'll keep a tab on you and we'll continue because this conversation, I, I, we, it's very interesting. And we need to keep updating and educating Nigerians to understand uh, where we are headed. Mr. Femi Ogunbi is a forensic uh, accountant and is also a public policy analyst there. You've heard his views regards to the crude oil market and, of course, production and Nigeria's OPEC membership and how we can, of course, make more money and uh, I don't address some other economic issues. Thank you so much for your time on the show. This is the first time on the show. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. Uh